GMO, genetically modified organisms. There's a clear divide for this argument. Is it good? Is it bad? There's extremists believing that genetically modified organisms is the future, whereas the others think that genetically modified organisms is the worst thing that humans have created so far. In this video, we're gonna try and put that to rest with the existing research and some of our own research. Are you ready? So, if you're new here, consider subscribing. We do health, tip, trick and hack videos and Mythbuster videos just like this one every week. Welcome to our channel and as always, these videos have three sections. The subject, what are GMOs? the facts, figures and the research, and lastly, the long-awaited conclusion or the verdict. So, with no further ado, let's dive in. What are GMOs? We've been doing this for a long time. Take a harvest of a particular crop. If the harvest was good, our farmers previously would have saved that particular type of crop and then used those seeds to ensure the traits are passed over from generation to generation so that the harvests are kept high. The technical term for this type of genetical modification is known as selective breeding. So, to be very honest, every type of food that you come across in your grocery store is genetically modified. So now, what's the big difference between selective breeding and today's genetical modification? The primary difference is that we remove the concept of luck and we ensure that the mutation or the change of the gene is synthetically and administered at a lab. So modern day genetical modification involves the removal of a inferior characteristic of a gene and the addition of a superior characteristic to that particular gene, which then translates to plants being resistant to herbicides, animals growing at ridiculous rates, and in even certain instances, medications which are low in cost. Genetically modified insulin might be the solution to one of the biggest medical issues the US is facing. However, when we talk about GMOs and food, the argument gets very heated. Why is it? Let's dive into the facts, figures and the opinions. Number one, plant and human toxicity and our ecosystem. One of the biggest arguments against GMO is that it increases the use of herbicides as genetically modified corn or soy are resistant to herbicides as that increases the percentage of pesticides ingested, which ultimately have many negative impacts. Whereas on the other side of the spectrum, people argue that crops such as BT crops, which are focused on only attacking the digestive system of the insect isn't as harmful or isn't harmful at all to human beings. It's simply like chocolate or coffee would be harmful for a dog, but not necessarily to a human being. We think there's a bit more than just the crop at stake. Majority of the GMO crops are patented by companies which focus on responding herbicides, which make these companies value over billions of dollars. One such immense example is a company called Monsanto, who single-handedly manage the prices of the herbicides and majority of America's food supply via corn and soy, resulting in monopoly prices and a economic downfall. We're not economists, so we've linked in the description below one of the most useful videos we've come across on YouTube, discussing the impacts of Monsanto and the economic climate. But from a health and an environment perspective, there's a much larger impact on the ecosystem. With an increase in pesticides and herbicides, there is an impact on the wildlife. Whether it may be bees, birds or worms, these are all affected by these chemicals and pesticides, which in turn might result in lower levels of pollination, reduced soil fertility and increased greenhouse effects. Number two, gene mutation and gene crossing. By mixing genes with a totally unrelated species, genetical engineering opens us up to a whole new host of unpredictable side effects, which might end up producing new toxins, allergens, carcinogens, and even render some of the most effective antibiotics ineffective. It might result in mutations in our cells, 
creating autoimmune responses. In addition, restricting cross-pollination is impossible. Cross-pollination meaning the possibility of genetically modified crop mixing in with organic crops. Number three, world famine and food consumption. This is one of the best arguments for GMOs, as GMOs are sometimes suggested to be the next organic of this world. We consume over 11 million pounds of food on a daily basis and consistently growing with a growing population. To keep up with this ridiculous rate, we need to find a sustainable source or a method. So some argue that one of the best methods would be GMOs. But life altering problems exist today. For example, the eggplant in Bangladesh. Until recently, harvests were impacted with pests and insecticides, rendering a lot of individuals out of jobs, in starvation, and causing economic downfall. However, a genetically modified version of the eggplant, eggplant BT, which attacks the insect's digestive system, has allowed the harvest to go back to normal, hunger levels to drop, and income levels to rise again. And these are not the only benefits. It could result in extended shelf life during a natural disaster. These crops could withstand droughts or in extreme conditions, even improve access to micronutrients. For example, omega-3 fatty acids are associated with health benefits such as improved cardiovascular diseases and reduction in rates of diabetes. And the existing best way to consume these fatty acids are through wild and organic fish, which are depleting at a large rate and consumption is increasing at a ridiculous rate. So genetically modified organisms have found an answer by inserting some of these characteristics into a plant. This science exists today and would potentially be a life-saving alternative. Number four, research quality and media. This accounted for over 1,700 pieces of research, some ranging from a three-month study stating that genetically modified organisms are safe and to others concluding that GMOs could cause premature death. As with majority of the research in the nutrition industry, the challenge is that we're not able to isolate an individual to one particular type of food sources. We cannot control the environment. And lastly, it might be biased due to the research and the funding needs. And next, media isn't helping. There's a consistent outcry to show that genetically modified organisms are bad with Greenpeace spending over $7 million to obstruct GMOs, whereas Monsanto is spending about billions to hold its patent and show its value via creating food. So personally, we think the research is currently biased, misguided by media, and ill-advised by funding. Number five, the unknown and the future. Potentially, GMOs could reduce hunger, reduce nutrient deficiencies, and even bring down mortality rates. A good example is golden rice, a genetically modified form of rice which have high levels of vitamin A. As of today, a accounted number of 8 million individuals die as a result of vitamin A deficiencies, which technically, if had access to golden rice, would not be the case. And also, GMOs are currently in a very young phase and the application has been very narrow. We could expand this to increase antioxidants, enable plants to be adaptable to adverse weather conditions, help plants to replenish soil fertility, to reduce meat consumption to a large degree, to reduce greenhouse effects, to increase life expectancy, to create a more sustainable source of income for low income groups. As human beings, we are always resistant to change and we're scared of what might be the unknown. So for this one, we believe having an open mind would be the best way to approach it. So with all this said, do you now think we're ready to bust this myth? Are GMOs bad for you? We're not sure. The science is too young. The research is too skewed. There is too much controversy in both arguments for and against GMOs. So our recommendation is avoid if you can. And if you do consume genetically modified food, include cruciferous vegetables along with it so that you aid detoxification. If you wish to, we have made a separate video about detoxification, 
linked above. That's all for this video. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. And we'll see you on the next video.